Well, this is very exciting. We're here at King's College London to see the launch of the, our students' experiments into space. So here's the front page of the NASA website showing the rocket which is going to take our experiments into space. So um, we're here today at King's and our experiment's finally going, so we're all super excited. We've been waiting since um, April of 2013, so should hopefully go today. <laughs> yeah, it's been a real privilege being involved in kind of the way our experiments progressed from when it was just a really simple idea that we thought up to and through the help of Julie and Zoe it's become something which is now fit to send into to the um, ISS. Yeah, now it's finally going. It seems a bit more real, really exciting. Well, I'm glad to say that we are joined by Siobhan Yarnakalendron and Diana Middleton, who were among the first British students to have their experiments sent onto the International Space Station this week. And Chris Barber is director of the International Space School Education Trust, who helps make it all happen. Uh, very good morning to you. Hi. Well, Siobhan, how exciting. It's amazing. It's really, really surreal, um, and we did not expect it at all. So yeah, we have to enjoy this, I guess. Yeah. When's it happening then? Um, sometime this week. We think Wednesday or Thursday. I'm not 100. It was going to. So yeah, we're really excited. We're hoping the slime mold goes in three-dimensional um, form, and um, it is surreal. It's happening right now. Yeah, I can't believe yeah. it. Yeah, we're really excited. I would just like to thank everyone at King's College London and Mission Discovery for making this possible. Yeah. Um, it's been an amazing experience. My name is Judy Keeble. I've spent the last 18 months working with the winning teams from 2012 Mission Discovery on their experiments, getting them ready to go into space. Firstly, I'd like to say what a massive privilege it's been to work with students who have come from secondary schools on such amazing projects that many a scientist couldn't have come up with. Uh, absolutely delighted to be here uh, for the launch of the first set of experiments back in the summer of 2012 when these experiments were designed. We hoped that we would launch them into space and it's fantastic that after all the hard work that lots of people have put in, the children have had some fantastic ideas, the experiments have been refined and now we're here with a few minutes to go before take off. It's fantastically exciting. There's 12 for the students involved in all in yes, sending yeah. these, these two things off, in, off into space and presumably you're hoping that they will stay, many of them, in the space project, so to speak, because we're looking for, what, tens of thousands more people to get involved in the British space industry. Well, that's right, but we also, I mean, our main hope is that uh, the young people that come on the project, not just those whose uh, experiments are selected, but they come away more capable and believing in themselves and think that, you know, they meet astronauts, they work with astronauts, they work at King's College with some great and world-renowned scientists and that they remember that they were just ordinary schoolboys and girls like them and that they go away believing that they can do something. And ideally, if they want to do something in maths and science, which we need, and ideally if they think about coming into our growing space industry. The students have told us for the last couple of years that they've built confidence and also they feel that it's something that they've built their self-belief. They can see themselves by meeting these really fantastic and inspirational people. Also, it's really good for them to be able to build their scientific knowledge. Again, we've seen, they've told us for the last couple of years, that they've really boosted their scientific knowledge on space exploration and the benefits to the human body as well as to the planet Earth. So we're really, really proud to be part of Mission Discovery. Um, and I was a mentor on the Mission Discovery programme. So it was my job just to uh, support the students as they were coming up with their idea for an experiment um, and just to help them develop what they were doing. Uh, so it's been incredible to see them come from just putting those ideas on paper to actually seeing it now going up uh, into space uh, to actually be on the space station. Uh, it's been brilliant. I think all of us have learned huge amounts about how experiments are sent to space, what's possible in space, and everyone has made such an effort to make sure that today these experiments are actually on the rocket behind us being sent to the International Space Station. Five, four, three, two, one. We have ignition. We have lift off of the Antares vehicle for the Orb One mission from the Wild Flight Facility, delivering Cygnus on its first commercial flight service to the ISS. Three, two, one. 
Eric Nielsen. A number of experiments on board were designed by pupils from Lewisham and Hounslow. The budding scientists, with the help of King's College, won the incredible prize as part of a project to inspire the next generation. The results of the tests will be sent back to NASA from the International Space Station, including research into the effectiveness of antibiotics in orbit. When you bring humans up into space, you're also bringing all of the bacteria that inhabit them. And so, especially when you're looking towards more long-term space missions, it's really important that we know how to combat bacterial diseases, particularly in space because um, astronauts' immune systems are slightly deficient um, due to the microgravity environment. And with that, uh, at 7.05 a.m. Central Time, we will call the installation of the Orbital Sciences Cygnus to the International Space Station complete. Second stage capture has been wrapped up by the crew of Expedition 38, so Cygnus now officially installed on the uh, International Space Station at 7.05 a.m. Central Time, which is space around 260 miles above Earth, just to the southeast of Australia and uh, Tasmania. Space Ground 2 for SS SSRMS Lee Snare Cable Imagery. Ground 2, Rick. Hey, uh, I took a series of about six, well, six sets of photographs for each of the three snares. Yeah. Can't wait for the results, what happens and what it actually does. Yeah, thanks. Thank you. <laughs>